What's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Simmons Comics. We have a new week, so of course we have some new comic book market trends. We're gonna talk about them right now in that three up, three down. Great week for comics. We have some great topics to discuss too, don't we, Jack? Oh, absolutely. And none I'm more excited to talk about than our very first one. So let's not waste any time, Brian. Let's get right into it. Everyone is excited about this one. Yes, we've had them kind of drizzle in, but we know for sure right now that new comic book day is definitely back. Everyone's talking about it. So it's the first one we're talking about on the uptrend this week. Yeah, that's right. And I hate to put it all on Marvel, but that's kind of what it comes down to is Marvel adding into the number of publishers releasing new comics. You know, DC had previously over the last couple of weeks started to trickle out some releases, mostly late printings. But now we get kind of the beginning stages of the full force of comics returning. We've got a multi-distributor system starting. We've got stores coming back, starting to open up their doors, albeit with some restrictions. And we've got new comic books flowing and people are excited. And that is good for the hobby. So it definitely belongs on the up portion of this list as new comic book day is something that I don't think people realize how much we would miss until it was gone. Yes, not only that, but you've also seen a bunch of viral campaigns going around the comic book industry with Back to Comeback. You might have seen yes. those videos floating around out there. But no doubt, New Comic Book Day is back starting today, as a matter of fact. So let us know in the comments what books you guys picked up. And with that being said, we're going to get into the next upward trend. And this one's been kind of hot for a while now. And we're talking about Peach Momoko. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I, we've definitely talked about Peach Momoko, even on this program on the up portion. But I think that we would be totally ignoring the elephant in the room to not mention the absolute heat behind Peach Momoko variant covers at this point. doesn't matter if it's an independent cover, be a high ratio incentive, a retailer exclusive. None of it matters. If Peach Momoko is on the cover, people want it. And there seems to be almost no limit to what, kind of properties or books people will chase. The, the, the craze for Peach Momoko cover art is in full effect. And now we've seen things like this in the past, even going back years with Alex Ross or J. Scott Campbell or Adam Hughes. But with this kind of like new age of social media, Peach Momoko may be like the first artist that's kind of hit this total crescendo where all of these avenues are available all at once. And to see a new artist kind of come into the game and ascend as quickly as she has is absolutely incredible. Seems to be no end in sight, Brian. Yeah, I'm happy for her. I'm glad we're all about supporting the comic book community here. But I also have to keep it real and say, I don't like every cover she does. And it seems like everyone's just buying off the name. I don't want to say everyone's sheep, but everyone seems like, oh, they hear Momoko or they see a Momoko cover. And it's instantly selling out. Kind of reminds me of that indie book that came when everyone was all about. Remember Rags when it came out? Everyone wanted rags. Everyone was buying up rags. Now they hear Momoko, they see a Momoko cover. And I don't think, that, I think they're just buying it for the name because they think it's instantly going to go up in price. Me, we're all about buy what you like here. There's some covers of hers I really like. And then there's some covers, like I've said before, you'd see hanging up in a third grade hallway. But either way, Peach Momoko is hot right now and we have to have it on the list or we'd be denying something that's definitely hot. Yeah, and I would tend to agree with you for the most part, but I will say that I think that Peach Momoko is on a streak of covers that have been exceptional. And I think that has kind of added to this increased heat is some of those people that were sitting on the fence like you and I have become converted. Not completely, but she has been making some good covers. I'll, I'll give her that. Including our own channel sponsor had that Yoda cover. Now that one I liked. Right, incredible. But the last one we're talking about in the three up portion this week is that Sony Spider-Verse. We've seen a lot of news about this right now. A lot of people are talking about it. You're starting to see new comic book days coming back. You're starting to see movie production news come back as well. Yeah, well, there's been a lot of talk about where the Sony Spider-Verse is going to go. And a lot of that hinges on kind of boring corporate stuff. has kind of nothing to do with the creative elements or graphic novel style storytelling that they're trying to bring to the big screen. This is really about corporations and their kind of fight over intellectual property. So it's been this whole arms race of, is Sony going to get this kind of like multi-property universe going? And we've seen Venom and now we're getting Morbius, but we haven't seen the connection between these properties yet. Yet. But now we're getting a lot of talk about all these other characters. Now we've seen them over the years, Silver and Black and talk of Madam Web and you know, this character and that character, Jackpot or 
Night Thrasher and all of these characters that got everyone excited for a time period and then kind of fell off. But it looks like this Madam Web train has left the station and we may be on the way to, to getting a solo film. This has caused her first appearance to just be astronomical. But beyond that, the talk that really that Sony is trying to expand this process and even furthermore, that Sony could sell their entire movie production company, their entire Columbia Pictures brand to Disney, bringing all of these characters over to the MCU. That rumor is persistent and strong and really reminds me of the early days of hearing that Fox talk. And, you know, when there's smoke, there's fire. And we all know what happened with Fox. It would be kind of a, a perfect storm for Disney to be able to bring in all of these great spider characters. Um, all of this has made these characters hot. Silk is hot. Uh, Miles Morales is hot. And I think that this is a trend that we're going to see continue. And we've been bullish on this channel of the Sony Spider-Verse in general. Yeah, totally off topic here, but you mentioned Spider-Verse. We had this long weekend over the weekend. You know what I did? I had my own MCU little marathon, but it wasn't in any particular order. I was just on Disney Plus going, oh yeah, I haven't watched that movie in a while, so I ended up watching like Iron Man 2, uh, Civil War, and then uh, Ant-Man. All in one day, my wife said, what are you doing? I was awesome. like, I don't know, I'm just watching Marvel movies. I miss them. <laughs> Either way, we got more movies coming and Spider-Verse is definitely something that's being talked about right now throughout the comic community. So there's our three-hour portion. Again, let us know in the comments what do you guys think of those and what do you think is hot right now as well. With that being said, we're just going to switch gears over to the three down, starting with IDW Comics. Yeah, now this one is kind of a sad story, but many companies during the shutdown for COVID-19 um, began to furlough employees. And when you furlough an employee, you're essentially saying that their services aren't needed at the moment, but that you hope to be able to retain their services at a later date when business can resume. Um, it seems that many of these furloughs for IDW have been moved to permanent firings, uh, staggering percentages of their staff, major decision makers, within the company. And it really leaves into question the status of IBW. Now, this is a company that has straddled bankruptcy for a number of years. It's kind of really reminds me of the TLC song. I really think that they uh, went around chasing waterfalls. Do me a favor, don't go chasing waterfalls. Is that accidental or were you trying to quote TLC on purpose? Should have stuck to those rivers and lakes they were used to, kind of tried to expand into this Hollywood game. And I don't mean getting things kind of optioned, I mean, walking that process along. They wanted to be the production company, the movie company. They wanted to be everything. They essentially wanted to be the next Marvel. And that put them kind of in dangerous expenditure land because if I'm sitting here telling you that IDW could be a company that's in danger of going out of business, or if I'm going to tell you that their licensed properties may end up making the decision that they want to go to another comic book publisher because of the company's financials, that may surprise you because IDW has a staggering number of popular properties and specifically some comic books that have been popular within the last year or so. I mean, this has been a banner year for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comics. And we've talked about on this channel several times that IDW had several creator-owned series hit, which is not typical of the publisher. They've been more known for those kind of uh, IP properties that they license and bring in. So what is going on with that company? You know, that's kind of, again, that's the boring corporate stuff, but it's something to kind of take note of and pay attention to, especially if you're a fan, collector, or investor in some of their properties, like you know that I am and we are. Um, I, I don't think anything that happens to IDW will ultimately kill or do too much damage to any of these properties. If IDW goes away tomorrow, other publishers like Boom or even Marvel would jump at the chance to bring back Transformers, bring back G.I. Joe, get in the Ninja Turtle business, um, and even My Little Pony. So it's one of those things where I say it, it, it's not a reason to be alarmed, but it's really unfortunate for all of those people, and you really have to kind of question the direction of that company. But we will be paying attention, but for that reason, IDW is definitely down right now. Yeah, as a company, they're down, but people also say as books, there's some hot books out there where we talk about yep. Canto that's getting ready to come out. Oh, yeah. New Star Wars Adventures, Clone Wars is hot right now. But either way, you bring up a good point that we're talking more about the company as a whole yeah. being down. And 
with that being said, we're going to kind of tie into that. We talked also about in the up how people are excited about New Comic Book Day. But one of the things that's on the downward trend is how those stores are getting those comics to sell to the buyers. And that's yeah. the distribution, right? Right. So we know that Diamond made the kind of maybe premature decision in some people's view to shut down. Maybe they made the safe view. Maybe the communication wasn't great. For whatever reason, Diamond shut down and it really sent the comic industry spinning. Two new distributors popped up to distribute comics. We talked about on, on this channel kind of some of the negatives that they're owned by existing comic book retailers with Discount Comic Book Service and Midtown Comics. At the same point, some have raved about the service that they've gotten um, from excellent packaging to kind of clear and concise ordering terms. So there's been a kind of a split. At the same point, you have Diamond come back you immediately start getting some of those same complaints. People are having trouble dealing with their customer service. You really don't know kind of like where they are staffed up. And because so much of the industry relies on them, it becomes difficult and frustrating for a lot of retailers. Um, but at the same point, as something Brian and I talking to publishers experienced, even had this conversation recently, there are a number of publishers, specifically a lot of small independent publishers who hold exclusive contracts with Diamond publishers like Boom Studios and IDW. So if you're a retailer, it's not like you have the full option of going another way and, and eliminating Diamond altogether. I mean, you can choose to do that, but you'd be eliminating yourself from an entire selection of books. Not to mention Diamond's vast array of products that go beyond just the comic book. So my hope and the, the biggest thing I hope from this situation would, would be that we would get a multi-distributor system. I hope that that distributor system wouldn't cannibalize our, our retail base and wouldn't come from within. I also had hoped that there would be a clear competitive situation, which we really don't have because the other two new distributors, they're getting pumped with DC product. Uh, you still got all this other product exclusive to these other places. Um, it's, it's kind of become a convoluted situation and it's leaving a lot of retailers asking questions like, where, where do we go from here? So I still am hopeful. I'm still a positive person that we're going to get this distribution system figured out. But I don't know that it's gotten better. Um, but I would love to hear from any retailers out there watching us in the comment section. Let us know what your experiences have been. Well, you mentioned competition. I did hear one thing that uh, because of those other distributors that Diamond has supposedly stepped up their game with shipping and are offering more protection on their books with bubble wrap or, and so forth that kind of help protect those, but that's kind of small, small peanuts, pun intended. But uh, either way, yeah, we've heard a bunch of things like um, the, some, some people don't have diamond reps anymore. There's just one queue they got to dial into to get customer service from. But New Comic Book Day is back, but it's had some, some bumps to get over either way. And with that being said, we're moving into the final one, our down portion. We're talking about digital only Marvel titles. Yeah, this is this is maybe a month old topic as it is the news of this got out in the beginning of May. Um, but we're starting to see the effects as these issues kind of come uh, up to the point where we would be getting them in stores. This is a topic that I was just really I've been trying to find a uh, format for us to talk about because this is something that bums me out maybe more than any uh, anything else. I have no problem with digital exclusive comics. Uh, DC has this plan to come out with a whole line of digital comics, but it's aside from the publishing. It doesn't take anything away from their current on print publishing and the collectability of comics. It doesn't do anything to damage existing um, storylines or existing collections that people have built, right? So I don't have a problem with that. What Marvel made the decision to do is take ongoing series and miniseries that are currently active right now. Ironheart. I, well, Ironheart 2020, starting with their number one issue, the whole thing is going to be digital. Again, that bothers me, but I even sit back and go, well, you know what? If you look at a, a series and go, it's just not going to sell. We're going to put it digital. I don't have a problem as much with that. I'd rather be digital than canceled, but yeah. Yeah, but where I have an issue is with a series like Ghost Spider, where you've been collecting it this entire time through how many volumes have they rebooted this, this series? And you can sit and say, well, people, people aren't buying it. And it's like, well, that's fine, but you have manipulated your customer base 
into buying through variant covers, through rebooting number one issues. You, how many times have you gotten people to go and buy a Spider Gwen number one, hoping that again we were going to get a a true run of this book? And now this book is digital. Now obviously this is a character I like, so I feel some sort of way. But another great story is Ravencroft. Another one with great uh, uh, covers. Another one that was tying into other stories, and that goes digital. Um, you know, Hawkeye. We shouldn't be taking characters like Hawkeye. Um, and, and, and taking their series digital. You know, how can you have him on the Avengers and you can't find him at your comic book shop? So th these are things where I feel like uh, these decisions, they bring us in the wrong direction. And I've heard those YouTubers and I've heard people in the comic shops and trust me, I hear them on the convention floor with the big fear of comics are gonna go digital only. And I don't really think that's the case because that eliminates the collectible ability. Comics go digital only. Comic cons don't exist. Comic cons don't exist. How do they get that information to the people? Like so many things happen if comic book collecting gets taken away that maybe even those in power don't understand. But, <laughs> we'll all be at Antique Roadshow looking for books. Right, looking for back issues. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing is, um, you know, I, I, I don't think that that's – a realistic course and I think they're gonna end up finding out that but the sad thing is they're gonna screw up some collectability in the meantime what happens when a character first appears in these one of these digital stories Brian and gets real popular gets real popular with people reading the digital you don't think they're gonna throw out a print copy you don't think they're gonna come out with some sort of product first time printed Right. What happens when the character shows up in issue number seven in Ghost Spider Digital and then is super popular and they decide, you know what, let's reboot the series because now Ghost Spider's popular. And now that character first appears a year after they've appeared digitally. And now you got to retell stories. It just, it just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, I don't understand the long term. I, I, if ultimately, I would have rather have them canceled any of those existing series that they felt like weren't financially viable rather than to go to the digital only. And I get what you were saying about, I'd rather have them digital only than cancel. I'd rather have a new series started fresh digital only from the get go to take any of these ones. New warriors. That would be fine. But to take any of these series where people have already invested money, comic shops, think about the back stock of comics. I mean, they're worthless now because it's a digital series. Who cares? It just, it, to me, this was a short-sighted decision that could have major ramifications, but I'm confident. I'm confident this isn't going to work. I don't think Marvel's going to see great numbers on those series moving to digital only. Um, I think, honestly, frankly, a lot of people will stop reading those series and they'll move on. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just Marvel putting up too many series at once. I mean, yeah. we talked about it what, not too long ago about Ross Ritchie from Boom at yep. Comics Pro saying less titles, right? Yeah, trim, trim your number of offerings, yeah. higher quality books, and books you can actually have time to market. So it seems like Marvel's kind of doing that. It's just they're also taking the titles that we like away, and it all comes down. I don't know. I don't know how they did the metrics or pulled you know the trends or whatever they did on that. But, yeah, it's definitely down right now. And aren't they, like, doing a new way of digital distribution or not new way, but – cutting back on some and only doing it. Because at one point I thought I said that they were like going away, but it wasn't really going away. Right, yeah. Now, there's so, they'll be through comicsology and like a lot of places where um, people get their digital comics. But, you know, it just, again, it's not, my issue isn't with digital comics or digital first comics or digital exclusive comics. My issue is with existing series is that they've been marketing these series for months and months and months, and now you suddenly want to move them digital. I don't know. That's, that's a problem for me, especially kind of characters that you've marketed as major. Yes. That definitely makes Jack a blue panda bear. Yeah. Yeah. This whole down list sours me, but that's the, that's no <laughs> great buying that's opportunity in that one. Nah, nah, this whole <laughs> down list sours me, but it is what it is, but there's some great uptrends. I'm happy new comic book day is back. Uh, there's a lot to be excited for. Yes. So, there's three up, three down. Also, make sure you comment and let us know what you think, how would things cool. We are putting the comments from last week's video up on the screen. 
But like we said at the top of the show, everyone is happy new comic book day is back. So you know what that means? What else is back, Jack? Oh, of course. The Bolo Show on Simple Men's Comics every Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern. We drop that weekly new comic book day show. We're bringing you all those confirmed first appearances, all the reader buzz highlights, all of those variant covers trending on the secondary market, and of course, my long-term play of the week. That's right. The original Bolo list, I got people DMing me today on Instagram asking for it. I said it's coming. Just calm down. We'll be sure to get it out. And the Bolo Show will be back. And that again is tomorrow night, Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern. Hope to see you guys there on Simple Man's Comics YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys in that video. It was back in late December when I did it. I just wish I could forget it. Because I hate how much I love it. Oh, I hate how I just love to catch a feeling. Yeah. And you told me that you understood the gravity, but that was.